All right. So when you first open Unity, um, Unity Hub, you're going to have something like this. So this is after the installation period and stuff like that. If you missed the video on how to install it or you need help installing it in Visual Studio, please reach out. But overall, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a project for our CAN game. And this is going to be a 3D game. If you're interested in learning about 2D, I have a whole series on that. But I'm going to go ahead and click New Project here. And um, if you're a student of mine, you're probably going to have to do the 2D projects anyway. But what I want to do is 3D URP Core. Um, it has some advanced shading features I like to use. And then under Project Name here, I'm going to do the Rise of Can Kind. Um, it's generally a good idea to use Unity Version Control um, because, like, uh, for backing up or saving or sorting files, um, I'm just going to check it on just so you can see what it looks like. You can see I already have it all hooked up. And when you hit Create Project, sometimes it'll prompt you that it needs to install a URP template, and this can take a little bit of time. Um, just bear with it and just kind of wait. So I'm going to go ahead and click this Create Project button and pause the video. And then when we come back, we'll take a look at uh, the Unity interface and setting up our first menu. Okay, so when the project first opens for me, I get something that looks like this. Let's go ahead and make sure we're looking at the same thing. Up in the right-hand corner here where it says Layout, go ahead and do 2 by 3 Something else I like to do is change my Projects tab into a single one-column layout. And I'm going to grab my Project tab from here and just drop it below. And so this gives me essentially a look at my hierarchy, which is a collection of everything in my scene. So if I select, for instance, my main camera and I press F twice, I can focus on my main camera here. Now, I kind of like to learn through doing, so I'm going to do my best to explain everything I'm doing in the process. If something's, not conf if something's confusing, please let me know. Um, but just briefly, you can see I selected my main camera. I can press the delete key to remove it. But if I want to know more information about what components, for instance, this is a transform component, is attached to my camera, that's uh, located within my inspector over here. So what I'd like to do is start off by just kind of setting up my assets. Now, I provide you with a picture for our um, can, the Rise of the Can Kind game. And that's going to be a background image that we're going to place back here. And that's going to go behind our main menu. So in the Assets folder here, I'm going to right-click. I'm going to create a new folder. And in this folder, I'm just going to call it Art. And within the Art folder, I'm going to create another folder. And I'm just going to call this Background. Now, this could be backgrounds for any part of the level or the game. Um, and really, sometimes I'll even create another folder here, and we'll just call this menus, you know, or like another one could be 2D art, and then within 2D art, you know, like we have, I'll have a subfolder called menus. So this is kind of a good way of doing it. Um, we'll actually go that route. We'll just kind of really compartmentalize it. I hate to bog people down with that, especially when they're first learning. Now, I want to import in the asset. I have it saved in our learning management system. Uh, I'm going to try to find a lot online somewhere to post it, and then we can link it. But I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to go to Import New Asset, and I'm going to navigate to, our, to the actual image where I downloaded it of our background for our main menu. All right, so I selected my PopCan background here. I'm going to go ahead and hit Import. Now, what I'd like to do is I'm going to right-click here, and I'm going to go ahead and create a UI. And I'm going to create a new canvas. Now, you can think of a canvas as a blank uh, canvas, essentially, but it's clear. And it's used, uh, I selected canvas here and I hit F, to store our UI elements. So, for example, like we're going to want a button. So, I'm going to right-click on here, go to UI, and add a button. And now, notice when I created this button as a TMP Pro asset, I got this TMP importer that popped up. Go ahead and hit Import TMP Essentials. And then close this out. And now you can see that our button has some text on it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit F to focus here. I'm going to hold Alt and left click. So say you hit F and it moved into the reverse or the back of this. I'm going to, if you hold Alt and the left mouse button, you can rotate around the asset. Also up here in the corner, you could see this is our Z-axis. If we click it, that's the back. If I click it again, that kind of puts us in this 2D view here. And this is what we want. So generally when I'm working in a UI, I'll just hit this 2D button and it'll lock that 2D for us. You can't really rotate at this point, but you can middle mouse click and pan. All right, I'm going to go ahead and above this canvas, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to UI. And I'm going to add a panel. Now notice that this panel is white and it's actually the exact same size as our background here. 
Now our image is, is roughly 16 by 9, but let's say that we have a, or well our image is actually full HD 19 by 1080, it's a pretty big image. But let's say we go this size, right? And we're just kind of thinking about, well, we want our game to work on as many different devices as possible. So your Nintendo Switch screen is different than your television screen, which is different than your mobile phone screen. So they're different sizes. They might all be HD, but they're different sizes. Well, let's take a look at, you know, we have our panel here, how we can always make sure that the screen size is the same. So here I have my panel selected. And you can see one of the components of my panel is this image component here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my PopCan background and I'm, you notice when I try to drag it in, it won't let me. And if I click here, you'll see it has this little image here, and mine does not have that. And the reason for that is because that image that we have should be a sprite or 2D element. Now, look what happens when I select it and I hit apply, and I expand this. You can see here we have that pop can background with that little image. So if I go back to my panel and I just drag this in, you can see now our image is there. But as we scale our screen, you could see Oh, actually it's doing a pretty good job of resizing it. Now the reason for that is if you go up to canvas here, we have this thing where it says constant pixel size. You can also do scale with screen size. And what that does is all elements, including this button here, will all scale with the size of our screen. Now with constant pixel size, notice as I scale this up, my button sort of gets lost and we want it to all be according to whatever our screen size is. So let's go back here and make sure we do scale with screen size. Now, the button is is okay. Um, let's go ahead and move this up a little bit. I'm going to hit W in this view. And that you could also click Move here. And I'm going to move this up a little bit above my thing, our character. And I'm just going to change the text here to Start Game. Now, we should have some cooler art than this. But for now, I'm okay with using Unity's default. Now, if you want your button to be bigger, go ahead and hit this here, which is our Scale tool, or hit R. And you could scale your button up if you want. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control S. Now, if you went with Unity Version Control and you set that up, what's pretty cool about this is you can go up here to Window and then Unity Version Control, and it pops this open. And you could type in here, you know, your first command, like, um, you know, Setup Menu. And it's going to prompt us to save this, by the way. So I'm going to hit Check and Changes. Oh, actually, it did not. Uh, let's make sure everything is selected and hit Check and Changes. Now, anywhere you go, if you sign into your Unity Hub and you have, uh, and here, let me go back to Unity Hub to show you this. And you go to add and you go to add remote project. Anywhere you go to add a remote project, your rise of the can kind will be located within there, which is pretty nice. So you can install this to any computer that has Unity. Just make sure that you have the same version of Unity on each computer. All right, so what's pretty neat about this is here's our project, uh, our, our project tab here with our menus. Now, your part of your assignment is you're going to have to create a credit screen as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select this button here, hit W, and then hit Control D, and then I'm going to move this down a little bit because I kind of like that art. And then this button, we'll go ahead and name it Credit Button or Credits Button. And this one we can name it Start Button. Now, as the game designer of, your, of this project, you're going to want to make sure that you put the credits in there um, let's actually make sure that we change this to credits. And then when we click on it, you're going to have to create a scene. So let's take a look at that. So this scene here, I'm going to actually save it. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. And I'm going to navigate to that Scenes folder, and I'm just going to name this Main Menu. And then in here, just for fun, I'm going to right-click. I'm going to go to Create. And I'm going to create another scene, and I'm just going to call this Level 01. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to man it, I'd like to um, navigate to level 01 when I click start game. For that, we're going to need scripts, like a script to do that, a programming script. So I'm going to right click on assets here. I'm going to go to create and then C sharp script. And I'm going to name this, um, let's call it main menu. And this is going to be our main menu script. And under assets here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a folder. I'm just going to call this folder scripts. And I'm going to drag that main menu script within there. Now, no script, this is actually kind of annoying too, this reload domain. Um, I believe if we go to edit and then, is it project settings? And we type in reload here. I believe it's located within here. Uh, let's see, yeah, it's under editor. 
there's this enter, enter play mode options. I'm going to check that on. And with these checked off, we won't keep getting that reload domain and reload scene every time we press play. So you can see it just fired up right away and we, our, our buttons are wor working and that thing doesn't keep popping up. So what I'd like to do is with this main menu script, anything, any game object, and these are all game objects, a camera, a directional light, a canvas, whatever, cannot do anything without the, a script attached to it. Believe it or not, most of these things are pre-made scripts that are made by Unity and attached. So what I'm going to do is with my canvas selected, I'm going to grab my main menu script and I'm just going to drop it on here. And now you can see our main menu script is attached to our canvas. What's pretty cool about that is now any coding I can do, I do. I have access to all of these things. And I can actually use this later to control my start button and credits button. So let's take a look at how we can script our start button so that um, A, it uses our main menu script to load a level. All right, so... At first look, this is going to be very daunting and kind of exhausting to look at. And if I start overly explaining what methods and variables are and stuff inside of here, it's going to just come off like word salad. Just understand that you're learning a programming language and I'm going to provide resources within our learning management system that teaches you the basics of coding inside of Unity. So for now, I just want you to get comfortable with things I'm talking about and just understand that you're learning a language. Don't worry too much if you don't understand everything. I promise you with time and practice, you'll understand all the code. And it's really not that difficult uh, when you get into the nitty gritty of it. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to create a our own custom. You're going to hear the terms function or method when you watch YouTube videos. That's these things. So it's really just a reusable block of code. The code they give you right off the bat when you open Unity looks like this. So we have a class. That's, that's just everything that all the code has to go inside of a class. Just understand this. And this class is called main menu. It's exactly the same name as our file, and it has to be the same or it will not work. They give you these two default methods. Don't worry about what their functionality is, even though they explain it here, runs every frame and runs at start. We're not going to use that right now. I'm just going to left click and drag up and highlight everything from essentially frame 7 to 17. I'm going to delete it. So we have an empty script here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. What I'm going to use is, and these are these using directives, uh, a class that already exists called scene management. So I'm going to press control D here. Now something else is, and you'll be like, wait, I'm using Visual Studio. He's using Writer. I actually pay for a professional license of Writer. You can get it for free as a student. For now, it's going to do the same thing as a Visual Studio. I've never had a student really confused with the difference. But if you need help, I'm 100% all in to help out with that. But anyway, so I want to use using Unity Engine dot scene management. Now, what I did there is I added a library of code. And this is code that's made by Unity, and it's located in this Unity Engine folder. Now, scene management is a pretty cool set of libraries uh, of classes and scripts and all this other stuff that allows us to do things like, uh, it just gives us some pre-made code to save us time to load things like levels. So for example, I'm going to start typing out some code called scene manager. And notice that it's automatically um, typing out that name, dot load. Here we go, scene. And the scene I want to load, now notice I'm getting an error here because everything, all code has to be contained within a method. So I'm going to go ahead and here, I'm going to delete that. And let's create our first method. It's going to be public because I want to access it outside this script, void load level. Okay. And then inside of here, I'm going to put in scene manager that load scene. And inside of here, I'm going to type level zero one. Now you might be wondering, well, how do I know what to name this? Do you remember this folder, this uh, the scenes folder we created here? We made a level in here called level zero one. If I double click it, save that for a second. It takes me to this empty scene. There's nothing in there. It's just it's just called level zero one. If I double click back on main menu, you can see we have a main menu here. What I want to do is when I click start game, I want it to load me into load level one. Remember that we created this script and we have this custom method, load level, and we have this single line of code, which is going to be using scene manager. And all it does is it loads a scene and it's asking you what scene do you want to load? So we attach this main menu script here, right? 
Now, what's pretty cool is, and what's built inside of Unity is there's this, uh, the Unity's button system, is if I select Start button down at the bottom here, you can see there's a button component. And there's this thing called on click. So I'm going to hit plus here. And I can grab my main menu from here or my canvas with the main menu script. And I could say, hey, see how it says no function? I was telling you that they use it interchangeably, function or method. When I click this button, that means start game, I want to call a specific function. Remember our, our script name is main menu. So I'm going to go down here to main menu. And because I made this public, I'm going to go up into here and I'm going to look for this thing, this, this uh, script, this method called load level or function. And I'm going to select that. So now when I click on this, it's going to call this load level function. And what's contained within it is the scene manager dot load scene level zero one. Now you might be wondering, well, where's the scene manager that it's going to load the scene from? Well, if you go to file here, build settings, this is our scene manager. See scenes in build. And I'm going to select this sample scene. We're not using it. I'm going to delete it. What I am going to do is I'm going to grab my, my main menu from here, and I'm going to grab level 01. And so what's happening here is when I click that button, it's going to go to this scene manager. It's going to look for level 01, and it's going to load it. So let's save this, and let's save this. And honestly, one other thing I want to do is I'm going to select this panel here. And I don't like how transparent that is. So let's go to our image here and let's click on this white here and let's just take this all the way up. This is the alpha. And now we have our can image here. So let's go ahead and press play. And I'm going to click on the start game button and you could see it loaded level 01. So cool. We coded our first script. You guys are programmers and you literally just made a main menu. So what you should do next, and this is part of your homework, is to right click and I want you to create another scene. And in this scene, you're going to name this credits. And I'm going to double click credits. And let's save that. And you're going to have to, uh, you can do this in groups, I don't care. But you're going to have to go from main menu and I want you to click credits. Something else I want you to do is inside this credits screen, you're going to right click, you're going to create a UI. Um, you can use Text Mesh Pro. And you can, let's see, let's make sure our canvas is on. Uh, constant pixel size, right? Or scale with screen size. I want you to type a bunch of junk in here about yourself. Feel free to, to attempt to add a picture. I think that would be cool. Um, and what else I want you to do is in here, I want you to right click UI and I want you to add a button. And this button, you're going to put it in the corner and you'll do something like back to main menu. And I'm going to hit select this rec transform here and pull this up. And I actually should just do that to the button all around. Here we go. And I want to be able to click on this button and go back to my main menu. So you might say, hey, you know what, I have this main menu script. And maybe I'll create another method. That's public. void back you always want to capitalize these methods back to what is happening here I'm, I have a very sensitive keyboard it's pretty annoying menu main and then I'll let you figure out how to call this and what code you should put inside of there that will take you back to the main menu so and let's go back to main menu. Yeah, so I think that's it for this tutorial. Um, and then next week, we're going to have another lesson where we start focusing on a little bit of the art behind game development inside of our level 01.